So my short time online, I've been called a lot of things. I never thought I'd be called an abuser though. This guy says, if you meet a reactor at a party, I suggest covering your glass or outright tell them you don't want to bang because they seem keen to take a person's silence for consent. People who live their lives exploiting others, their labor or careers in their own lust for money and power are the very sort of people who would sexually abuse someone. A reactor's career is specifically about ignoring consent and only respecting people when profit is at risk. And this guy like doubles and triples down defending this and this drama has been talked to death, but we're going to take a slightly different approach to this. I mean, this was clearly done just for clout. His video has gotten the most views any of his videos in a long time has gotten since he cried about someone beating him to his like GTA speed on time. But I actually see a lot of people defending this being like, well, um, actually, he's only talking about the consent aspect of it. So technically, that's true. And this just goes to show that like these type of arguments don't work in the real world. It just makes you look like an emotional automaton. You can't just be work purely on logic. That's not how like the world works. Like when you compare something like really serious, like abuse with something trivial, like reacting to content, it's going to completely derail the conversation to how stupid you are to what you're trying to compare. Like if you have an issue with people having consent for react streaming, just say that, but you're not going to say that because you wouldn't have gotten more views if like people should really ask to watch people's videos. Isn't as like intriguing as react streamers are the same as rapists like you do what you're doing and you can't get upset that people are obviously going to have an emotional reaction to something that dumb new roles of course not a lot of changes you know and we know that Nats can uh, almost do anything uh but i'm i'm surprised okay <laughs> so that's like a freaking weird camera shot like so either the cameraman is like a huge creep or i'll give him the benefit of the doubt and say maybe he was moving the camera to get a different angle and he didn't realize where the camera was pointing so let's say it's not the cameraman's fault you know whose fault it is the producer like what producer sees that camera shot and was like yes that's the shot we need right now switch to that camera like what are you doing you just like so many things would have had to have gone wrong for that shot to show up without just one of the people on the team just being a huge perv like come on and some more crazy online drama. So this VTuber is huge in Japan, is known for giving like the girlfriend experience, but that can backfire horribly, which we saw, like, especially in Japan, where like their fan culture is like insane. Like you thought parasocial relationships were bad in the West. Just look at Japan, like damn. So what happened was she leaked her DMs with another male VTuber who also gives like the boyfriend experience and the DMs kind of made it seem like they're in a relationship and both sides their fan base are freaking out one person is like if i said the words i want to say i'd get suspended i genuinely hope the absolute worst for you burn in hell i chose him canceling his membership and like at the end he says it is over like it's like a breakup or something but you can't say that like this fake relationship is one oh, well okay the fake relationship is one-sided but she definitely gives off the impression it's not because she's literally selling engagement rings to her fans for 40 bucks. So she's definitely egging on this type of fan base and like trying to collect the <laughs> lonely losers who think they have like a virtual girlfriend. But obviously none of this warrants like death threats or hoping that they have harm come to them or like lashing out at the VTubers. But this kind of reminds me of people who feed animals at the zoo who end up getting bit like they were both clearly giving like the boyfriend and girlfriend experience so they were going to attract a bunch of creeps and weirdos and they made it worse by like selling engagement rings so like they're definitely feeding the animals and they just got bit by the animals and i guess that's like kind of victim blaming but like at a certain point you you know what kind of fan base you're growing especially when you're selling engagement rings to people and people are actually buying them you knew there was going to be backlash when it got leaked and you might have a boyfriend. And like, it's insane to me that she has to come out and apologize and her management has come out to apologize for this. But like, you fed the animals. You, it's only a matter of time until they get it bit, unfortunately. Back to mom. I was going to say, the one that it's following is not its mother. Its mother is still next to the dam. And it's giving a bit of attitude to everything that's moving in the breeze around it. Goodness. Mom's coming very quickly now. 
Mom has just realized something might be wrong. I think the baby just got a fright. It didn't realize Mom wasn't following. There, it's running back to Mom. It's seen Mom. <gasps> Mom! <laughs> that is so cute. That's so cute, but that gives me severe grocery store PTSD. So just when you think Ninja's manager can't get any worse, she makes it worse somehow. So if you don't know, she's known for any time Ninja's involved in any kind of drama. She just sticks her nose in it and makes it like 100 times worse. Like the Ninja Pokemon drama was bad, and then she comes out and threatens to sue Pokemon, which just made it worse and made Ninja look like an idiot. So she announced that she's stepping down on this weird website that no one's ever heard of. And it seems like the article is written by her. And like, you should read this whole article. It's like one of the weirdest things I've ever read. I like some of my favorite parts are like with a book on the way and an elite Hollywood agency by your side and an inbox buzzing with offers. It's impossible not to wonder how Jess is going to make this work. She's a self-starter who's never met a problem she couldn't solve. Savvy, but approachable. Unassuming, but a total boss. But opportunities knocking. And she means less time running Team Ninja. So this just sounds like she wrote it herself and put it on this weird website that no one's ever heard of. So how she made this worse, like stepping down is actually like a smart move. She did it right after the drama with Pokemon. So it's obviously seemed like she was stepping down because of her mismanagement of the Pokemon drama. And people pointed that out in this response to the article. But I guess that, <laughs> that made her look bad. So she comes out later on Twitter and says, oh, actually, I'm not stepping down. I'm just thinking about stepping down sometime in the future. Like, if that was the case, why would you put out this article now? Like, just a random journalist came up to you wanting <laughs> to ask about your future just randomly? Like, it's a good thing she's stepping down because she's definitely not cut out for this job. I feel like Ninja would have gotten to where he was without any kind of management at all. Like, because this definitely doesn't seem like it helped his career in any way. Wait, why don't we give these to Soda? No way he sticks his dick in these. He no does. Way. He's talked about it many, many times. He does? That doesn't seem comfortable at all. See, the thing is, that would be actually perfectly comfortable for Soda Pop. Because, like, the whole thing is, like, he puts it in the toilet paper roll, and he's self-conscious because he doesn't touch the side. So it would be completely fine. Like it wouldn't be any, like anything was on at all. Oh, that was actually a sick flip. What the fuck? Holy shit. What the fuck? Holy fuck Big dude. flipper. <laughs> like, that's so impressive. Like how do you do that they with a headset on? How does a headset not fall off? And like she has cords attached to her head, so how does her feet not get caught up in the cords above her? What the... So whether or not you like VTubers or you think VTubers are cringe, like that that's just impressive. Like being able to do that while connected to the ceiling by your head and not getting completely tangled up in the cords is just insane. Like it, I think it would be insane just to do that normally, but to do it while attached and with the headset on, like that's crazy.